Okay, uh, life is always good with a little bit of spice in it, isn't it? Now, uh, to add on the spice, there should be some creativity. So, creativity is not uh, uh, taught, it should come from within. Now, just your imagination, God has given you a wonderful uh, brain and thinking capacity and with that thinking capacity, you are going to imagine things and make dialogues, okay? So, we are going to do now imaginary dialogues. That is, we have to assume. What if the sun and the moon uh, happen to talk to each other? It cannot happen, but let us assume, okay? There is nothing wrong in assuming and uh, see, we should not be very uh, scientific or computer oriented all the time factual, uh, facts based. We have to have some imagination, it will give you a thrill, okay, when you write some imaginary stories or imaginary dialogues or autobiographies. Autobiographies are, if I say you know, autobiography of a pen. You have to imagine that pen is a living thing and what it feels and what it wants to say, all that you can put it across. So, same way now, you are going to imagine a sun and a moon. Uh, I will give you some more uh, like this so that you are going to break your uh, brain and come out with your creativity and imagination skills, okay, imaginary dialogues sun and moon. Actually, a uh, moon does not have light of its own, is not it? The sun's light only falls on the moon and it gives us light. I am sure you have learnt all that. Now, uh, sun let us assume is like the father and the moon is like a sun that is its child, okay. Okay, let's see now. Sun happens to see the moon and he says, Hey, sun, how are you? And moon says, I am fine dad. How are you? And immediately sun says, why did you go far away from me? Why did you go far away from me? And immediately moon says, Do you, okay, in an explosion, I was thrown out of your house, okay. We have heard of the Big Bang Theory and all, isn't it? So, Moon probably says that in an explosion, in an explosion, I was thrown out. So, he, the uh, moon, uh, the son of uh, sun says that in an explosion, that is the big bang theory, where uh, in an explosion everything got away from 
uh, one particular point ok. Uh, so, the moon was thrown out. Then immediately sun says ok, uh, sun says ok my dear sun why do not you come back now? Or why do not you come home now? Okay, and then uh, Moon says, we can even uh, say that, why do not you come home now? I have been I have been waiting for you for you since many light years And Moon is so excited, ok. He says, how sweet of you dad. We can even say I am missing you, ok. I am missing you. Moon says, how sweet of you dad. But now I can't. I can't come back. I have to be in an orbit and keep giving, keep reflecting your light. Keep reflecting your light to the to the earth. Sun says well I have to be going Going to, I have to send my rays. To the earth. By sun, moon says, by dad, I love you. Okay. Now, if you see sun and moon, uh, moon actually uh, many poets figure it as a female 
but now we are just imagining sun as a father and moon as a son. Imagination we can do anything, isn't it? Maybe we, I can just give you a imaginary picture of uh, the sun and this is the this is the moon. Okay. Okay, now imagination, we can, uh, imaginary dialogues, we can write a plenty. So, let me, let us read this and you can also take uh, roles like this and you can write your own dialogues. Sun, hey sun, how are you? Now, just imagine sun is meeting, uh, now uh, the sun is meeting moon in a different uh, situation that is when we have eclipses what happens between the sun and the moon comes the earth. So, the moon's light is cut off that is sun's light on the moon is cut off. So, at that time sun cannot see the moon but now the moon has come between the, the earth and the sun. So, the moon is able to meet the sun and talk. Hey sun how are you moon? I am fine dad ok you see I have written I am fine dad. How are you? Sun says why did you go far away from me moon in an explosion I was thrown out. Sun ok my dear son why do not you come back? why do not you come home now that is uh, the sun wants to call moon back to itself ok. I have been waiting for you since many light years I am missing you and sun, sun that is the moon says the sun of sun how sweet of you dad we can even give an exclamatory mark but now I can't come back. I have to be in an orbit and keep reflecting your light to the earth. Sun, well, I have to be going too. I have to send my rays to the earth. Bye sun, moon. Bye dad, I love you. Okay, so this is just an imaginary dialogue. And you feel so very uh, exhilarated when you write dialogues like these imaginary dialogues and it helps you to improve your uh, skill of speaking, your conversational skill, your uh, skill in making dialogues and also it improves your creativity. So, we can make many dialogues like this and uh, practice it. Okay. Next we are going to do another imaginary dialogue this time it is between Kalpana Chawla do you know who Kalpana Chawla was? She was the first woman Indian woman to land on the uh, to get, go out into the space but when she came back from uh, her trip she uh, just before she reached the earth she died. Okay, let us have an imaginary dialogue with Kalpana Chawla and a uh, scientist or a reporter. Okay. Kalpana Chawla had been a very, very hard working, a very normal um, villager from North India and how she fought against all odds and she went into the space after studying so much, uh, after working for NASA, uh, how she went. Uh, it is a great story. So, we will just ask her as a reporter how she would have felt when she was chosen to go on the mission uh, to go into the space. Okay. Between Kalpana Chawla, you should know all these people, great people who worked for, uh, who brought India fame. And 
and a reporter. Hello ma'am. How did you feel? When you were appointed? Mission Specialist on STS eighty seven Columbia. That is the name of the rocket that went into the space. And Kalpana. It was a glorious moment in my life. It was like fixing one's flag on the top of the Everest for the first time. It was like fixing a country's flag. on top of Mount Everest. Mount Everest also was conquered by uh, two of our people. Who are they? You have to be proud of these people. Okay. Next one. Porter. When you do something, something which the others haven't done in the country, you should be so proud. Like when you win an Olympic gold medal or a silver medal, you are representing the country, isn't it? So that was how she felt when she was sent on mission uh, specialist, sent as a mission specialist on STS 84, 87, Columbia. Reporter. What was your reaction? What was your reaction when you were blamed for technical snag in the science satellite? Actually, first time when she was uh, uh, given permission to go, there was some problem with the uh, uh, scuttle and um, science uh, shuttle and then she was blamed for it. Okay, so she felt very sad. She thought she may not uh, go again into the space at all. But later she was uh, proved to be right and then she was sent. Okay, what was your reaction when... 
you were blamed for some snag means problem in the satellite and kalpana says i knew that i hadn't that i hadn't made any mistake any mistake i believed i believed that things will change or that will be proven right what does it mean when you haven't made a mistake and your people are blaming you for that you knew you can know that you have done the right thing and uh, things will be proven right that is the right thing will be known to all well you were proven right how did you feel how did you feel when you flew across or flew above ganges Ganges looked looked um we can say glorious i just felt proud to be an indian I just felt proud to belong to this country. Okay, I just felt proud to belong to this country. Now listen, these people like uh, reporters they are asking questions and uh, Kalpana Chawla is replying and she had always been proud though she studied abroad and all that she was always proud of belonging to the glorious country of ganges okay and also you see she was blamed this can happen to any of us when you are in your workplace you can be blamed for something which you haven't done then you will just wait for things to be proven right isn't it and also you are expected to have a very good patriotic feeling towards your country 
Okay, now those who have read about Kalpana Chawla will know the life story of her. Now let's um, read this uh, imaginary dialogue between Kalpana Chawla and a reporter. Okay, this you can put it in your own roles like in your workplace, how uh, when you achieve something, how you felt and then when you are blamed for something which you haven't done, how you feel and what you think and then how uh, very patriotic you are and all this, a reporter can question you when you have done something great for your country. Okay, reporter. Hello ma'am, how did you feel when you were appointed mission special, specialist on STS 87 Columbia? Kalpana says, it was a glorious moment in my life. It was like fixing a country's flag onto uh, the top, the top of Mount Everest like climbing Mount Everest and fixing a flag there. It was like that when she went into the space. Of course, you can't put the flag in the space, but you know, she felt like that, okay? And uh, reporter says, what was your reaction when you were blamed for some technical slag in the satellite? And Kalpana says, I knew that I hadn't made any mistake. I believed that things will be proven right. So for which reporter says, well, you were proven right. Because first they thought that uh, she made a mistake, but then they found out that she was right and she hadn't made any mistake. So she says, he says, well, you were proven right. And then he goes on to another question. How did you feel when you flew above or over the Ganges and Kalpana says Ganges looked glorious. I just felt proud to belong to this country. So that she exhibits her patriotism or patriotic feeling towards uh, the country India.